Last year, when I disassembled the new iPhone 13, one of my viewers had a crazy idea. <laughs> what a ridiculous idea. <laughs> what would be the point of doing... Actually, maybe there is some merit in making a USB-C iPhone. If anything, it'll be a fun challenge. So I set a goal of what I wanted to achieve, which was no loss of functionality, cable reversibility, working fast charging and data transfer, and to retain the phone's water resistance. The Lightning to USB-C cable. I need to extract Apple's C94 board and wire it up inside the phone. The board is still covered in the lightning plug tip, but because it's held on with plastic, I should be able to heat it up with an iron and slide it right off. Leaving nothing but the board covered in melted plastic. So I've successfully taken the C94 board from the cable. Now I need to remove the charging port assembly from the phone, remove the lightning port, and join the two together with a ribbon cable. This means more precise glue removal. And even though I was being extremely careful, I discovered this. I had broke something. Alright, let's try again. And this time, I'm not taking any chances. You guessed it. Power tools. By cutting through the pins and using low melt solder on the mounting points, I can safely pull the port off without damaging any components. Now I can easily desolder the decapitated pins. The 8 pin connectors have a pitch of 0.6mm, but I could only find 0.5mm flex cables, even from suppliers who offer custom cables. But I should be able to make it work. It's coming along nicely. Now I need to find a USB-C port. Most ports on the market were either too bulky or not waterproof. Until one port caught my eye. A replacement port for the Samsung A52. 
iPhones already use Samsung screens, so why not their ports too? To mount this port, I need to design a small board that connects the five wires of the lightning cable and houses two 5.1 kilo ohm resistors on the CC pins to safely allow for fast charging. This is me pretending to create this board in real time. Now what should go here? Ground, yeah, that'll work. Now to get this board printed. This looks like a good place. Ten pieces, point eight mil. I enter the parameters I need, upload the Gerber file, and print. A few days later and these little darlings have arrived. I included holes in the board so as not to obstruct the screen brackets. But the bottom pentalobe screws just bump into the sides of the port. Oh, also, I made a small mistake with my board, mixing up the CC pins and the SBU pins. But as the SBU pins aren't used, I can just break them off and bridge the CC pins to that pad. Time to modify the frame. We need a bit more room to fit the port. Then I'll use a CNC to precisely cut out the larger hole. along nicely, but I soon realised that the newly sculpted hole has too many different surfaces that aren't going to look very neat. So I need to find a mouth for this USB-C port. Okay, so I guess that's not a real thing. Maybe I can take the USB-C mouth from another phone. If only there was a phone manufacturer that was notorious for making flat-edged rectangles. Ooh, thanks Sony. And we have our port mouth.
Now I just need to enlarge the hole to fit the mouth. Now if you're like me, you may be thinking it should be easy to fit this tiny little wafer of a board somewhere inside the phone, but we are idiots. It's almost as if the company that made this phone knew how to utilize all the internal space. I could fit the board below the battery, but this space is reserved for if and when the battery expands and also for the display IC chips. Then I wondered if I could shave a bit of plastic off the loudspeaker. I found that I could squeeze it in here. I just need to modify the frame a little and the edge of the screen supporting bracket. All right, let's assemble this thing. I used some custom standoffs to replace the original standoff screws. The rubber grommet presses firmly up against the mouth and with those screws, the port is secure. The bottom screws clear the port and will slot into the screen brackets as normal. I'll wire it up and route the cables. Time to pass on the crown. Clean up inside. Make a slight modification to the new screen adhesive.
Thanks for watching. Why not check out my custom builds playlist or subscribe so you don't miss out on the next thing I do. Which will be pretty cool too.